accounting accidentally. This video is called The Disappearing Company, Return on Assets and Return on Equity. So the subject of this discussion is Chegg. And Chegg says, step-by-step -step breakdowns, big study breakthroughs, expert-supported study to help people answer tough, coarse questions. So they are a test preparation and online education business. And if you slide down, you'll see some of the other things they do, human experts you can count on. Our AR tools are supported by real experts. Designed for learning, 100 million solutions available instantly to answer your questions if you're a student. So that's what Chegg does. And what made me think about this was this Wall Street Journal article, how ChatGPT brought down an online education giant. The stock is down 99%, almost unheard of, and students looking for homework help are defecting to ChatGPT. This isn't a big surprise. The online education company was a go-to for many years for students wanting help with their homework. When we all shifted to virtual learning during the pandemic, subscription go way up, stock goes way up. Then came ChatGPT, as it says here. Students have a free alternative. Chegg had spent years, millions of dollars, time developing contractors in India who provide all this content. And now with ChatGPT, it's really not needed anymore in the views of a lot of people in the stock plummets. So an example, it's an example, and there'll be dozens of them, how chat GPT and AI completely changes a business model. So let's talk more about return on assets, ROA, and return on equity, ROE. So the key point here is that owners want to return, meaning net income, on their investments. So the formulas, return on assets, net income, divided by total assets in red, Turn on equity, net income, divided by stockholders, equity in blue. So what I did was take an example. Let's take Apple. This is from Yahoo Finance. So the balance sheet in billions, which is pretty amazing that a company has that kind of size. Total assets, 364 billion. Stockholders equity, 56 billion. Then the income statement dated 9, September 24, that period of time. Net income available to common shareholders is 93 billion. Now, I'm just excluding, I'm including income available to common shareholders. I'm ignoring preferred stock just to keep this simple. There may be preferred stock and other types of equity outstanding. Just to keep it simple as an example. Apple's return on assets is net income of 93 billion in blue, 364 billion assets in red, over a 25% return. The really big number is return on equity. Stockholders' equity in red, 56 billion. Net income available to common shareholders in blue, 93 billion. You can see it's 1.66%. So big returns. If you're an investor in Apple, they are really using assets and equity to, ge to generate big returns for their, their shareholders. That's what makes it an attractive stock. So how does a company like Chegg generate return on assets and return on equity? Like many companies affected by technology changes and disruption, they need to change to a new business model. This is an old article. This article is over 10 years old, as you see right here. They updated it in uh, about three years ago. But this is from Forbes, and it's called 14 Famous Business Pivots. I'd highly suggest you go out and look for it if you Google business pivots examples. That's what I did to find this article. I think it's a good one. I'm going to mention two business pivots with companies we've all heard of. So Twitter. Twitter began as Odeo, a network where people could find and subscribe to podcasts. Wasn't quite working. They went back to the drawing board. They ended up creating Twitter. The other example I'll use is PayPal. It was developed by a company called Confinity in 1999 to allow people to beam payments from their PDAs, handheld devices like the Palm Pilot. It goes on, it merges with X, which is owned by Elon Musk. It becomes the preferred online system for eBay users. eBay users love it. And it goes on to become the payment system that we that we all know and use today. So why do we bring this up? Because the lesson is, if you can't pivot to a successful business model, you can't generate net income, which means your return on assets and your return on equity is going to be very low or maybe not even existent. So that's the lesson here.